In recent months, a mysterious star has created a firestorm of media speculation. In October, news headlines around the world suggested that the star might be surrounded by a so-called alien megastructure. The nature of the mystery is a seemingly impossibly rapid dimming of the star, impossible under standard stellar theories. This is another star similar to our sun that's in a transition phase like the rapidly dimming star. I'll get back to this star a little bit later. Well, the second paper that caught our attention was en entitled Dimming Star Remains Mystery, but it's likely not caused by comets. The dimming star remains a mystery. What is its cause? That's not answered. Stellar evolution, that is when stars change. According to the standard nuclear fusion model, these changes take place over astronomically long periods of time. So we're talking about millions of years. And so it's certainly not reported that these kinds of changes would happen during the, the period of a human. So recent discoveries of extremely cool stars have produced some additional types. We now have an L-type star and a T-type star. The discovery of these objects have required the original diagram to be extended even farther to the, toward the lower right. And these stars have extremely low absolute luminosity and temperature. These, they're so low, in fact, that they theoretically can't support internal nuclear fusion reaction, which essentially falsifies the model right there. If they're stars and they can't have nuclear fusion, well, that says nuclear fusion doesn't power the stars, but they ignore that <clears throat> problem and continue to talk about the, the nuclear fusion model of the, of the stars. The EU view on this whole operation is to say that any star that experiences a change in its electric current input will move to a different location on the HR diagram. That being the, the case, the, such a change can happen very, very quickly. It doesn't require some long million year evolution and changes internally in the star. All it requires is that all of a sudden uh, the, the current input increases for some reason and it therefore can happen very, very quickly. Now back to this transitioning star that's similar to our sun. See the highly defined large bright spot uh, just below the equator in the southern hemisphere? If you go back to my uh, first super sunspot alert video, you'll see the exact same highly defined bright spot on our sun just north of the equator. Now let's jump to the weather, and I'll come back to this later. Right now, there's not a, a single thing except a lot of dust in the Atlantic Ocean. This is right now. We'll step it ahead through the 18th, 19th, and you can see this big cloud. This is thicker dust. The green is actual dust particulates. This is normally blue when there's no dust on here. This globe is normally blue not tan and green. That means there's dust particulates all over the earth. Now a few days before I spotted the super sunspot, I spotted a cloud of dust in the Atlantic and that's when I put out the video earth dust, ocean water, uh, solar wind, and plasma video. You see this uh, storm uh, on Mars and uh, on there and I said the same thing was going to happen to the earth. And now you can see that that dust is indeed spreading and there's also another dense clump of dust traveling across the, the Atlantic again. Too, I want to talk about this flooding in North Carolina and uh, South Carolina that's still not done yet. In fact, it's only just getting started. Florence, it was moving so slow once it made landfall um, dropped incredible amounts of rainfall, set records all across North Carolina, and if I'm not mistaken, parts of South Carolina too. Now, in the same Earth dust video, I showed a picture of the red spot on Jupiter, which is a giant storm, bigger than the Earth actually, and that storm sits in one spot for a decade or more. And I said the same thing would happen to the Earth as the dust spread around the Earth. The water icons represent major flooding. 
And these, in some cases, will be at major flood stage four, as you can see here on this graph, and it only goes up to the 22nd. Purple is major flood stage, will be in major flood stage through the 22nd, probably the 23rd, 24th, major flood stage up at the Rock, Rocky River in Siler City. 24.9 feet, the old record of 14.9 feet being broken by 10 feet. That's amazing. So the reason this storm dropped so much water is because it slowed down and stalled. It's set here for three days, basically, maybe longer. And I've followed hurricanes for many, many years. I'd never seen one do what this one did. It just basically parked over North and South Carolina. And now it's moving northward. And a tornado was spotted by Kirk Stewart and many other people from near Richmond, Virginia. I think this is near or at Midlothian. Now here's a close-up of the storm on Jupiter and you can see that the large storm is composed of a whole lot of smaller storms. Different sizes actually. Got a lot of information here guys. Train derailed and I think this is in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Hi folks and welcome to another video from A Plain Truth. Now let's take a look at the uh, arc discharge events that are taking place on the East Coast. Some people actually think we're being attacked with lasers. But here you see one of the torched houses, another very, very, very selective fire. And you can see the, f the bright flames, the centerpiece. Where did the fires come from? They said it was a gas main explosion, yet the firefighters had never seen anything like it before, and the mayor called it Armageddon. Now see the perfectly round hole cut in the roof of this house? You can see how they would think that it's a, that's a laser or something, but they just don't understand plasma discharge. Now let's jump to another plasma phenomenon that's happening uh, on the west coast of the U.S. and also in Europe. Now I've sped this up. This isn't over the Bay Area. This is from a different, uh, I believe it's over in Europe. This was filmed and I speeded this up two times so it's going twice as fast as the normal recorded speed so you know. But clearly look at the orbs. Look at them generate one behind the other. You'll see I think a total of four here gets developed in the sky. So they're clearly creating some type of hole in the clouds. Is it for a directed beam? Is it for uh, energy control? We don't know yet. We're still trying to figure out what they're doing doing uh, and why they're doing it now you see three now you see four now notice that there are two holes in the clouds and those are from plasma sheaths punching through the atmosphere and the plasma making a connection to the planet okay now go back and look at it again and notice that every time the orb gets to the point closest to the other uh, circle it picks up energy from the other circle and another plasma orb forms going around the circle. In this picture you see two more holes punched in the atmosphere but you can also see the uh, vortexes forming uh, between the hole punches and the earth. Now here's another hole punch cloud but there isn't enough moisture in the atmosphere clouds to form a really defined hole so you see that the plasma balls in the clouds now here's a, another plasma formation that's round but it's not an open ring it's a sphere and notice there's only one of these instead of two rings now I have to jump out in space and show you some globular clusters which aren't talked about very much in uh, astrophysics now notice how similar this cloud formation is to the globular structure. As above, so below. Here's another globular structure in space. Notice the perfect circle of smaller spheres around the uh, larger sphere in the middle. Now to bring all this back down to Earth, here's the uh, petroglyph in Chaco Canyon. And you see all the spheres in the circle? Here's another petroglyph from Chaco Canyon, but you'll see similar petroglyphs and cave paintings all over the earth. Here's another petroglyph that also includes some spiral uh, structures. Here's a picture of the spiral structures that the ancients were seeing. 
these plasma structures must be really important for so many people to carve them into rocks and paintings and caves all over the world. Now let's go back to stars again so I can get to the main point. Now here's a star that scientists say is in a slow burn, but actually it's another star in transition just like ours is. I believe our sun will continue to develop into something like this sun. Eventually I think it will develop a coronal mass ejection similar to this photo here. All of the plasma hitting the earth then will result in plasma balls similar to this, except there will be a whole lot of them. Here's a map of the Younger Dryas uh, impact areas at the end of the last ice age. Notice that there are two separate areas that do not cover the entire earth. This shows you that there's a magnetic component to the whole thing. And there's another piece of important evidence in Chaco Canyon which is the sun dagger which marks the position of the sun the last time the poles shift. Now here's a modern picture of the sun dagger and if you look closely you can see the old position uh, carved into the petroglyph. The degrees marked between the old and new positions of the sun dagger exactly match the degrees of the tilt of the earth. Now you can see how this relates to the magnetic fields of the planet. The poles don't flip polarity they just change positions and it's mostly the North Pole that moves, the South Pole doesn't move very much. And this is exactly what we see the poles doing. Now here's a magnetic anomaly map of the Earth and as I've already shown in previous plasma videos the magnetic anomalies are where all the disasters are occurring on the Earth. And those same areas are the areas that were hit hard the last time this happened. Right now here's the good news, although I'm sure some people won't see it that way. The amazing thing about this map is most of the highly developed countries on the planet are in those areas. And most of the wealth in the world, of course, is controlled by people in Europe and the U.S. Folks, we don't have to fight the greedy materialistic people that are enslaving us and raping the planet. Mother Nature is going to take care of that for us. We don't have to do anything except survive. Now read what Edgar Casey says about the pole shift. Here's an important quote by Michael Parente about the problems with capitalism. I believe the Bible is correct and the meek will inherit the earth. These people look all depressed and stressed out like modern materialistic people who are always worrying about their money. Do they look ashamed of their bodies like modern man? Look at this beautiful young woman and everything she's wearing is handmade. That takes an incredible amount of skill and knowledge and creativity. How many modern people do you know that have that kind of skills and knowledge? I want to end with some inspiring quotes that I hope will convince people that we've made a big mistake and we've gone down the wrong evolutionary path. But we have another chance and we can get back on the right path. video folks. I'll see you next time.